This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. So did we just get the bad ending because of that? Because I didn't, I don't remember making a choice at all. In fact, liter I literally didn't have to make any choice to get on the, the Yumiko route. I literally just had to not go on the other characters' routes. I kind of wish this game had more choices to make, but at the same time, I think you can also do the choice system a bit wrong. Like, there's another visual novel, Katawa Shoujo, where, like, all of the characters are at a school for, like, disabled people. Main character has, like, a bad heart. And there's, like, there's one part where it's like, oh, great, you've got a bad heart, like, and you're suffering from heart attacks that could kill you. Like, unless you, like, get into physical shape, like, your heart could kill you. And it's like, so, are you going to take exercise seriously? And if you say, like, anybody playing the game for the first time is like, okay, if I don't take my exercise seriously, I will literally die. So, yes. And if you say yes, you instantly get on one specific girl's route. <laughs> and that's how every single person got Emmy's route first. <laughs> so at least it doesn't have a choice system like that. It's just more like, well, there's one choice to get the good ending and the bad ending, and thus far it's been pretty obvious from each route I've done which one is which. Well, we'll have to see, though. Uh, we are going to get both the good ending and the bad ending. So how it works is when I inevitably reach the choice that leads to the good ending or the bad ending... I'm going to pick the cho- I don't even know which one is which. I'm just going to pick the choice that I personally think is the best choice. And if that's the bad ending, then so be it. Then we go back to the good ending. And if it's a good ending, then we go back and do the bad ending. So that way we get both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's an important part of a relationship. We, you need to play Smash Bros. with each other. Also, we still- Yuji still doesn't know that Yumiko's crushing on us, so. My contract with Sakaki is at an end. I'm no longer obligated to guard her. Our classmates were uniformly surprised by the news, but they haven't pestered Sakaki about her reasons. I think they're more or less figured out why she made that painful decision. Makina, you ready to go? No! <laughs> Not her! Amine had a shopping list too, didn't she? Don't forget it, or fiends might get scary later. <laughs> Yeesh, my ears are not gonna like this. Okay, kid, you're just off-character now. Don't tally-ho me, uh, Machina? Her feet pattering noisily, noisily against the carpet, Machina heads up to Amine's room. On the other side of the lobby, Sachi's stopping, uh, stooping slightly in front of the attentive pose of an old-time newspaper reporter, jotting down Sakaki's words in a small memo pad. Yumiko, apparently there's a fan club that wants to see you. They're, they all have beards and are wearing suits. <laughs> well, you can literally ask Sachi to do anything, and she'll say yes. She's the absolute definition of a doormat. But there's no scoop involved. We're going out for a shopping trip, so Sakaki's asking us to pick up a few things, just like Amine. Okay, at least if Sachi's here, it'll be slightly more bearable. Yeah. Answering my younger classmates, I glance to the far side of the lobby. Sakaki's been reading on a sofa at the side of a large front window for a while now, but from the d desultory way she's picking through the pages, I think it's safe to say she isn't particularly focused on the story. She's like, oh, doggone it, this is such a bad book. Why did I think Twilight would be a good read? Shots fired. She glances up from the page briefly. Our eyes meet from across the room. Oh. Hey, baby. Sakaki looks away, gets to her feet, and walks off in the direction of her room. Right, yeah. About time we get going. Since relieving me of my position, Sakaki hasn't set foot outside the school's walls. Probably because she has a brain. That's partially because of her own instinct for self-preservation, and partially because of me. The girls decided it's no longer possible to actively protect herself against the clear threat posed by those attackers. She dismissed me so I wouldn't get dragged into a losing battle on her behalf. Does the principal know that there is a large amount of goons that are trying to kidnap Yumiko? Because if so, maybe we should get some security guards at the school. Because unless I'm mistaken, I think it's literally just us. <laughs> 
But even after that, I've continued keeping an eye on Sakaki, if more indirectly than before. I try to keep my distance, but I'm never too, too far away to respond in case something happens. I think Sakaki's faintly aware of that. It's probably part of the reason she's shutting herself up in the dorm instead of going outside and making my life harder. It's not like she's come out and told me any of this, of course, but considering her behavior until now, it seems like a natural interpretation. Sakaki defiantly rejected the life of a bird in a cage, acting as if she pleases it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try that again. She was acting as she pleased, even in the face of threats, but now she's locked up once again. My determination to protect the girl is part of what's now fencing her in. It's honestly pretty damn frustrating. Amine's shopping list isn't too huge today, and my young classmates only need a few fiends themselves, all of which we find easily enough. That said, the total time investment on this trip turns out to be fairly sizable. You know, I prefer more details to less details when it comes to buying stuff. I would much rather... So, like, let's say Yumiko runs out of shampoo. If Yumiko just writes down, get me shampoo... I'm just going to assume I can get any shampoo and she'll be happy. But he's like, no, you need to get the pH balance, like, anti-dandruff shampoo made by Suave. With, with like, lemon peach flavor. And, yeah, if you write all that down, I can find it. But if you just say, give me my shampoo, I'm going to be like, okay, you get what you get and you're happy with it. <laughs> Sakaki's shopping list reflects her personality. It's neatly and methodically written, even naming specific manufacturers and product numbers. Wow! Detail! And Sachi insisted we conduct a painstaking hunt for the exact items described, so this final part of the trip is taking longer than the rest combined. True, and if we buy directly from the manufacturer, we get a discount. Sachi smiles peacefully, allowing the eco-friendly reusable shopping bags dangling from her hands to sway back and forth. Naturally, she brought enough of those fiends for all of us. Not that it's anything new, but you're sure on top of things, Sachi. Yeah, true enough. They love that cliche in my workplace, too. <coughs> right, sure. It's a bit late to lament my role in the rising levels of vulgarity around here, but when a girl who comes off as innocence personified starts tr talking like this, I can't help but feeling a little guilty. Yeah, uh, so Amine definitely talks about sex stuff the most, but I think Sachi is number two. Makina is either number two or number three, which is, um, truly a deeply uncomfortable and disturbing. And then Mitru and Yumiko both are like, Bruh, why are you talking about this? But then again, lately I've been starting to think a good part of the problem might lie inside Sachi herself. But as I'm considering the matter, Sachi comes to a stop with a small surprise sound. I don't know if I'll be playing Mario Kart tomorrow or not. She's gazing a little way down the street with a curious expression on her face. What's wrong, Sachi? I turn to follow her gaze. What the hell is that woman doing? A certain blonde has parked herself by the side of the road. Oh, I thought it was the other blonde. I thought it was going to be Michiru, not Jan. Ensconced in the driver's seat of her tacky bright yellow sports car, she kicks her bare legs into the air in a tacky display of irritation, turning every male head in the area. She's putting on a big show of waiting for someone, looking down at her watch with a pouty expression of boredom. Occasionally even whining to her audience. Oh no, she's looking for me, isn't she? Oh, no, don't worry, I just... Mm. Oh, sorry, Jan, but I ha still haven't found my Girl Scout cookies. You know, it's been a while since I got them, but I need to restock. Wow! That's rude! <laughs> An accurate evaluation. Also rude. As I bring a hand to my forehead and high steadily, the bare-legged blonde in question turns in our direction. Hey. And with a greeting more appropriate for a co-ed hitchhiker stranded in the Utah desert, she favors me with a nauseatingly sweet smile. Alright, let's go. No reason to hang around here all day. Studiously avoiding eye contact, I attempt to play dumb. Can't you see I'm with the girls now? 
1時間もこうして待ってたのよガンムシってことはないでしょねえテバー I don't want to ride in the bimbo mobile Abruptly switching to fluent and idiomatic Japanese you'd never expect from someone of her appearance, JB calls to stop me. I obey, feeling my face settle in an, an expression of profound irritation. What's this? Here I was, thinking the owner of some cheap sex shop deci decided to announce his grand opening by renting a walking billboard bimbo. But it's just my good friend JB doing her thing. What can I do for you? You are a piece of work, Yuji. <laughs> Yeah, Jan, you tell him. <laughs> I'm actually not that big of a fan of JB, but yeah, she puts Yuji in his place, which he desperately needs. So you go, JB. You're moving up in the in the world. Look, JB, I'm not particularly criticizing you. I have the greatest respect for your professional capabilities. All I'm saying is. Given your age, it might be time to quit this hobby of wandering around town in clueless foreigner mode while dirty old men undress you with their eyes. Well, I mean, that is valid, but maybe you could have put it in a nicer way. No offense intended. <laughs> Snap! That might be a nice change of pace. I'm currently unemployed, you see. Really makes you realize the importance of having a nice, steady job. I can barely afford beans. Halfway through the sentence, JB bites her tongue. Sachi and Makina are at my side, and we're in the middle of a public street full of random civilians. Not exactly the time or place to discuss my job. Oh yeah, we we a secret a super spy agent assassin, bro. That's our official job title. <laughs> nice recovery. Well, I suppose not. That's why I'm enjoying a lazy summer vacation instead of polishing my resume. Nope. Sorry, Girl Scout cookies. What? Right now? Sounds like another troublesome discussion awaits. JB's still got a light-hearted expression on her face, but she spoke those words just now in a familiar deadpan tone of voice. From years of experience, I know it means this is somehow related to work. Sorry, but would you two mind going back first? Yes, I Makina's like, I want to ride the bimbo mobile. Makina, Makina, I'm gonna just give this to you in no uncertain terms. If it's a choice between romancing you and romancing JB, we're going JB so fast that you won't even see it coming. <laughs> If there was a JB route, well, that would actually kind of still be icky because she's supposed to be like our parent parental figure. So if that was a romance option, that would actually also be icky, but just a different kind of icky. Girl Scout cookies. Fin mints. Samosas, trefoils, tagalongs, dosi dos. Those Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> uh oh. Machina just got on JB's hit list. Interesting that how that part bothers you more than the mature women crack. <laughs> Thank you, Sachi. I can't believe you actually are having tact right now. I guess Sachi isn't completely oblivious to social cues. Never thought Makina would be the one saying that to me. The times are truly changing. Sorry about that. Sachi promptly leaves, dragging a grumbling Makina along with her. <laughs> are you seriously whining about this? Don't take the kids' crap seriously. Come on, let's just get going already. Why is it that all the women in my life, regardless of age and personality, uniformly manage to give me headaches? Because you happen to be a close acquaintances with a lot of very, very annoying women. That's why. Sakaki's begun to shut herself up in her room. Obviously, her revisits to the riverbank have stopped as well. 
After a few minutes zipping down country roads in JB's ridiculously flashy car, the two of us take a seat near the otherwise deserted area where the incidents occurred. Oh, I, I love the super spy music, though. And I wasn't specifically restricted from accepting. But in any case, it's been over, a f over for a few days now. For the moment, I explained the details of my recent unemployment to JB. I'd expected her to be a little more surprised about Sakaki's request and my decision to accept it, but she doesn't even bat an eyelid. Kind of kills my momentum. I suppose JB may have done a little re investigation on her own as part of this whole thing of Sakaki's father. Once I've more or less finished my story, JB pushes a prettily lapped, wrapped lunchbox in my direction. Okay, extra points for JB. Sandwiches, eh? Wise choice, Julia. I suppose even you'd be able to make these without turning the kitchen into too much of a disaster zone. You suck, bruh! The weirdly girlish packaging is also a little painful to look at, but I decide it's best to just keep that particular thought to myself. Hmm? I did say something. Didn't you hear me? Uh oh, when her when her mouth goes down to just one pixel, you better watch out. Why the exasperation? I'll apologize if I did something wrong. <sighs> it's ham, ham, tomato, cheese, ham, ham, tomato, and cheese. In that order. JB retrieves a small notebook from her black file case, her voice shifting to a business-like tone. As directed, I listen carefully while chewing away at her egg sandwiches. A what? I don't think so. Yeah, they sent a message around. The chief of staff resigned and they appointed a successor, right? Who's, so who's my new boss? Hmm. Oh. So in other words, we go in corrupt. Ho. <laughs> Major General. To deliver some instructions about the situation with Sakaki's father, I'd imagine. East Beach lacked direct influence over our company, but now they've got a way to pressure us. Maybe even give us marching orders. So, in other words, Alcatraz. Yuji, you might need to quit this job. I feel like it's uh, not going to end well for you. This really is a fantastic job, despite the crappy salary. And you don't even get... This has got to be one of the worst jobs out there. You get crappy pay, it's terrible, you're totally expendable, you get beat up, and you gotta do everything people tell you to. And you've gotta ride in a bimbo mobile. Literally whenever they tell you you have to. Sounds awful. First I'm pushed into a mission, then I'm yanked abruptly off it, and in the end I get a nice trip to the doghouse for my trouble. Our employee benefit program is a shining example to the world. <laughs> What are you telling me to do? I was promised a normal school life, and they didn't even give me that! They sent me to the insane asylum school, and I want to... Actually, no, wait! No, this is a good... This is a great deal! We get to leave insane asylum school, go to a real school, and live happily ever after by meeting a normal girl. Well, I mean, the girl won't live happily ever after because she'll be married to Yuji, but from the perspective of the protagonist, that would be the happy ending. I see. So keeping me off this operation itself isn't enough for them anymore. Now they want to keep me away from Sakaki entirely. Well, <laughs> actually, maybe the bad ending of this route is, like, you leave the school. 
and you get with a different girl. This whole thing has been a headache from the start, and it's clearly only getting worse. <laughs> hey, Mobius, welcome. Uh, Artie's Friday Night Funkin'. I actually think that's a real game, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm streaming Friday night because uh, Saturday and Sunday I will not be available. That's why. Sakaki's father interfering with public assets on behalf of his private interests is understandable. It, if legally dubious, but on a more fundamental level, the plot's full of holes. The vague initial orders, the lack of support, the artificial abduction attempts, and the obvious radical change after Sakaki Yumiko hired me. Under a certain hypothesis, these contradictions all begin to make sense. Hey, JB, there's one thing I want to ask you. None. Up until now, I assumed Sakaki's father had learned uh, about a threat to his daughter's safety, and was just taking a variety of measures to protect her. But considering all the events up until now, the relationships within the Sakaki family and this odd pressure from the Chief of Staff... I've started to think that the real threat to Sakaki Yumiko may be her own father. Any thoughts on that hypothesis? Bullseye. <laughs> I said Friday Night Funkin with an N. It had been in the back of my mind all along. If Sakaki Michiaki's objective was simply to protect this da his daughter, inducing Ichigaya to take me off the job, despite my success, would make it very little sense. But if the man's goals are exactly the opposite, things start to fall into place. He was probably trying to intimidate his daughter at first, and I was deployed to serve as some sort of a prop in that play. The attacker's constant complaints about what they signed up for might have referred to a scripted scenario handed down from their employer. Too bad they hired Yuji, who has no self-restraint. In any case, at the present moment, the identity and goal of Sakaki Yumiko's enemy appears very clear. Her father is the one trying to abduct her. Isn't that right, JB? Her face hard and expressionless, JB quietly casts her eyes down. That's more than enough of an answer for me. Sorry, Julia. <laughs> JB has her own position to consider. Middle management in my company means dealing with highly confidential matters. I can't even guess how many secrets she's obligated to keep. And JB's the very model of an uber-professional German, with a deeply ingrained reverence of, for playing by the rules. Nonetheless, I'm constantly using personal emotions and our shared history with my master to try and pry information out of her. I'm probably going straight to hell based on my treatment of women alone. You know, he is introspective! Well, I mean, that's not why you're going to hell, but, you know. Well, not that I have the slightest qualifications for heaven in any other respect. That, that's the real reason. You're not, you, ha you haven't qualified for heaven. I'm sorry about Sakaki. I think I'll be getting back to the dorm now. Or, I'm, I'm sorry about Sakaki. <laughs> I'm worried about Sakaki. I'll be getting back to the dorm now. I'm going to be in danger if I continue interfering in the Sakaki family squabble. <laughs> and from what JB's told me about Ichigaya's internal situation, there's a real chance my own people might end up trying to kill me. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> Wait, God, can I come to heaven? A uh, new phone who dis? <laughs> Sakaki's alone. If I leave, she'll lose what little she has left. She, she got the other girls. Now that I've learned about Sakaki's past, closing my eyes and abandoning her now is now no longer an option. The girl spent her whole life profoundly isolated, and now, yet again, a certain group of self-centered adults are trying to tear her life apart. Although she cut herself off from the others as a means of self-defense, somewhere deep down, Sakaki's still desperately hoping to be rescued. I don't know if I can save her, but if my interference can create a positive change in her life, I'm going to keep interfering. Whoa, careful there saying you deserve to go to heaven. <laughs> if you think you deserve you to go to heaven, that might actually be part of the problem. I owe that much to the woman who pulled me free of the same dark swamp Sakaki's trapped in. What? <laughs> well, I mean, at least by the uh, Christian doctrine, you don't get into your, you don't get into heaven based on your own merits. You get into heaven because of Jesus' all fulfilling sacrifice. That's just the that's the Christian theological doctrine. Why is it that women always go straight for the romantic explanation? You're no better than those leering gossips in the dorm. 
At the very least, that's not what this is about. Probably something closer to sympathy. <laughs> Satin sees everything? Is that true? JB responds in an ambiguous tone that suggests she's only half convinced. Hmm. Suppose so. He certainly knows more than me. <laughs> but he also is not omnipresent, so thank goodness for that. Her voice seemed a little lonely at the end. Oh, that startled me. A bright yellow car, badly out of place on the shabby country road, roars around the bend and disappears. The edge of the sky reddens little by little. Clouds begin to gather overhead, suggesting an evening shower to come. Now we're getting all the rain! JB says difficult things sometimes. Turning over her final words in my mind, I slowly begin to walk the road home. The shower turns out to be a full-blown rainstorm, continuing well into the night. My room's filled with the rushing sound of the rain outside. I sit in bed and listen, completely unable to sleep. Insomnia is not exactly uncommon for me, but today it's not the usual variety. I just can't get that conversation with JB out of my head long enough to nod off. Sakaki Yumiko, eh? Honestly, I didn't give her that much thought at first. Our first encounter certainly left a strong impression, but since then she's tended to fade into the background as often as not. For one thing, I've always tried not to get too deeply involved with my classmates, as she's a deeply private person herself. At some point, I recognized we were pretty similar in that regard. Little by little, I developed something of an interest in her. And right now, she's weighing down on my mind more heavily than anything else. Sitting up in my bed, I push back the curtain open and look outside. It's coming down even harder than I'd expected. Staring at the drops of water bouncing off my window, I feel my thoughts suddenly lurch inward. Ugh. Something almost like nausea wells up inside me. Why am we getting the... the epic music? From the bottom of my throat, the depths of my mind, something ugly pushes its way to the surface. Think about myself. Those were JB's instructions from this afternoon, weren't they? Funny thing to ask of a pet dog. In between rough breaths, a few self-deprecating words spill out of my mouth. I'm a dog. Raised and trained on taxpayer money to accomplish certain jobs. They allow me the bare pretense of humanity, but that privilege is conditional on my absolute loyalty and success. And now I'm on the verge of ignoring orders outright, opposing Ichigaya for the sake of one woman. Is it alright to betray your country to help a single person? My master never taught me the answer to that one. Well, it depends on what your country be asking you to do. Sakaki. What do you want to do? A girl whose mother disappeared into a deep fog. A young woman betrayed by her father. A human being who lost sight of herself, consumed by a sense of meaninglessness. Staring at my faint reflection in the window, I ask Sakaki Yumiko a question. I know there's no answer waiting for me. Even Sakaki probably doesn't have one. But at this rate, she won't have the luxury of indecision for much longer. The drum beat of the rain against my window finally dies down. In the silence, the darkness outside seems to grow thicker and more menacing. Resting both hands on the window, I continue to ask the night questions without answers. It feels like dawn may never come. But of course it does. And in the next morning, we're blessed with such a pleasant weather that it's hard to believe that the storm passed us by only hours before. Even so, Sakaki gives no sign of leaving her room. It's just about the time when she'd usually be heading out to the riverbank, but she doesn't even appear in the lobby. Her shoes sit untouched in the cabinet, slowly gathering dust. In only a few days, that simple daily routine has vanished, leaving nothing but a void behind. And yet again, I have nothing to do but stand around engaging in silent so solilo soliloquies.